most English groups play in England until they get to a certain position and then they can go abroad because they get nice food backstage and the rest of it. Whereas we always played in Europe every time we played in England. We always thought of it as just European. So, and the same with Australia and New Zealand. We first went there in early 1980. So, they, and they remember things like that because when we, were, we went, we played small clubs and actually met the people who were coming to see us. So, so that's why we're successful. It really is because people have seen that we haven't neglected them until we've become a, a, you know, reached a certain status and then this in that and then deigned to play to them. It's like we've always played to them. Do you find it better now that you're able to uh, concentrate totally on the cure? Um, I don't actually spend more time, I don't think, concentrating on the cure. With the, ba the, the reason why I had to leave the bench is just because it would have been my free time to concentrate on other things, I was with the Banshee, so that just got a bit too much for me. Whereas now I still spend the same amount of time with the Cure, but the, the Banshee time is now Robert time. It was something that I, f I really wanted to do because I wanted to step back from being um, just Robert Smith of the Cure. I mean, it's, it becomes a bit wearisome after a while because you start to think of yourself as, as this, this person. So I thought um, playing with the Banshees would allow me to, you know, go move off and be forgotten. I mean, obviously standing behind Sue, you are standing behind Sue. So, um, it, I think musically, it, it, um, a lot of what I think would have gone into the Cure, I put into the Banshees, which left a sort of pop for the Cure to meddle with. So I suppose it did have an effect, but it wasn't really a conscious one. And at the time I was playing with the Banshees, I never used to think about what am I going to do with the Cure to make it sound different. So it's I don't know. There, there are, in retrospect, there's a difference, but I wasn't aware of it. The funny thing is that uh, a lot of the music press has seemed, seems to be trying to make out that um, you actually actively disliked the last album and that that was part of the reason why you left. No, I, we had um, a few uh, disagreements about the production, the actual sound of the, of the record. But no, I mean, it took, took a long time making and I was just part of the making of it. But um, when it got to the final stages, I. I began to sort of think in slightly different ways, sound-wise. But then everyone did, but I didn't have the uh, the stamina to, to argue with the Banshees on mess because it's a difficult thing to do. There were too many people, I thought, in the studio at the end, and so I thought one less would make it easier. But um, I don't think that really matters because I haven't liked Cure Productions in the past when I haven't been completely in control, so... Yeah. I mean, there's disenchantment, there's sort of degrees of disenchantment, but it really had nothing to do with me leaving. I mean, whether I thought it was the best album ever made, I still would have played. The glove project that you did with Steve Severin, what was it all about and why did you do it? Uh, to make millions. Of course. And it went tragically wrong. <laughs> uh, th that was just something that, that we, we'd had in a, as an idea for ages. But um, it just happened that we had time off that coincided. I was getting a bit tired of playing with The Cure and he was... Uh, this is when Sue and Budgie went to do The Creatures. Yeah, a lot That's of people right. thought it was a reaction to that, actually, didn't they? Ah, oh, we thought it much before then. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it was sort of mentally very, very um, distressing doing it. It was really good fun, but I came out of three weeks in the studio feeling like I'd spent 180 years with him. Uh, um, I liked it. I, th I thought that the album was really good. I'm in a, sadly, in a very small minority, I think. It wasn't very well received. Love Cats, that is ultimately commercial, in, with a capital C in the end. Um, do you see yourself continuing in that sort of vein in the future? No. That, I mean, again, you say that, it's commercial with a capital C, but when, when we did it, there was a lot of debate, as, you know, as, it, as it, it would have been commercial suicide to release it, because there, we did it by going, we just happened to be in France playing a festival, and I, and I had this idea for doing something a bit jazzy so instead of coming back to England we went to Paris and recorded because I thought it would be really slinky to record there as we'd never recorded outside of England before and um, it did sound very oh, it was supposed to sound very like the Aristocats or something very sort of late night Paris um, so it worked but I mean it was again it was just a one off it didn't really happen I mean, there was nothing on the top that, that sounded like Love Cats and there'll be there'll be no Love Cats follow up you know? there'll be no Love Dogs or whatever uh, I mean, live, it's very much the five people that are playing. I mean, I think it's the, by far the best live lineup we've ever had. It's the most powerful lineup. But um, I mean, ultimately, the, the, the it rests on, on my head or in my head, or it doesn't rest a lot of the time. It gallops around inside my head. 
But um, no, everyone's involved. I mean, they have to be, otherwise it would be the whole thing would be a bit pointless. The live LP that's come out at the moment, are you pleased with that in terms of sound and a rep representation of what you can do live? Um, yeah, again, for, for, for what it is, I, I think it works. It it's, looks like a bootleg and it's supposed to be our version of a bootleg. It's, it's all black and white and very cheap and it was done very, very quickly, in about four days of mixing. Um, and it's very rough, but I think that's how live albums should be. My favourite live albums sound rough. I don't like live records that, that attempt to sound like studio records because obviously you may as well go into the studio and record, re record it. But you said in an interview that I read that the time that you stop working in contemporary music is getting close. Did you mean it? Yeah. Well, why, why is this time getting close? Because I'm getting too old. What are you, 25, 25, quarter of a See, century. it's showing. God, you'd have said I was 17 last year. <laughs> You're not getting too old. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, not, it's not really a, a physical age. It's, um, I, 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 it's something I think that, that most people don't come to terms with until it's forced on them, that the idea of, of stopping. And I'd rather sort of be aware of the fact that I'm going to stop rather than suddenly, you know, watch myself sliding down the, the, the endless slope to oblivion. I, um, so it's there. I mean, you, you have to constantly remind yourself that, that it always, you know, it's not always going to be like this. There's got, obviously, there was something before, there's got to be something afterwards. And it's really just that. I mean, I've been doing this now for, I'm playing in a group for, since I was uh, about nine years. So I shouldn't think I'll be playing in a group for another nine years, so therefore it's sooner than later.